Hey everyone, I am Robin the Copy Bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick sloth. And today, I get personal. I talk about the story behind my copywriting business name and I will give you some pointers or advice if you are very new to copywriting and you're trying to think about what you should name your business. You can uh, learn from my mistakes and <laughs> take what you want from this little story. So my business name is E.T. Robbins Productions and now it's E.T. Robbins Productions LLC because I recently formed an LLC. I'll do a video about that at some point. So you might be thinking, okay, she's asked the copy bitch, her name is Robin, E.T. Robbins Productions, what the actual, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. So here's the deal. I've wanted to be a writer since I was like eight years old. I am the youngest in my family and I'm closer in age to some of my nieces and nephews. You following this so far? So when I was about eight, nine years old, my nephew Jason and my niece Tisha were like one and two, you know, learning to talk, that sort of thing. And they had a hard time wrapping their little tongues around Auntie Robin and they used to call me E.T. Robbins. And in my wisdom at eight and nine, or however old I was, right around there, I said, when I grow up, I'm going to use E.T. Robbins as my pen name. Now, how I got into pen names or why I thought that was like a thing and really exciting and that I should have one, I don't know where that came from, but that's where it started. E.T. Robbins was gonna be my pen name and that stayed with me. Like I held on to that like a dog with a bone for, you know, throughout high school and college. And when I started to do copywriting in around, you know, 2002, I was also doing some stringing for my local hometown paper. I actually published, my byline was E.T. Robbins. And I wrote an article eventually for the Globe and I wanted to use E.T. Robbins as my byline. They're like, nah, -uh -uh. <laughs> you're a real person, you need to use your real name. And that was fair. And they were absolutely right. Like looking back, that's the way it should be. Obviously a journalist should own what they're doing and there shouldn't be a, you know, shouldn't be an anonymous or a, a, a pen name. That's fine for fiction, but not for journalism. So fine. So that's when I made the shift. I was like, you know what? If I publish more, it's gonna be under my real name, Robin Bradley. But I still was like into like this E.T. Robbins business. So I, when I hung out my virtual sh uh, shingle for my copywriting business, I named it E.T. Robbins Productions. Why did I add on the word productions? Who knows? To sound cool maybe? To sound bigger than I was? At the time I was coming off of a stint in radio. So I think I was thinking at the time that I would do voiceover work in addition to copywriting and maybe, I don't know, some event planning. So I also did some event planning when I worked in radio. So I think I was thinking productions would encompass all of that. So there he goes, E.T. Robbins Productions is my business name, even though my URL is just etrobbins.com. Are you following this? There will be a quiz. So yeah, my, my business name's a little confusing and have I ever, has it been a hindrance to business? I don't think so. I do wonder sometimes if it has affected people clicking on my URL when I come up in search. Probably not because I do, of course, try to write really good title tags and meta descriptions. So, but the, the, the URL is hard to read. Like if you don't know it says E.T. Robbins, you, you might not even know how to pronounce it. So that was just not smart planning on, on my account. And it's a pain in the butt when I have to like give, you know, I'm talking to someone on the phone or whatever and I have to give them my email address like Robin at E.T. Robbins.com. I often just won't even bother if especially if it's not business related and I'll give them a generic Gmail address or my author website. So here's the thing, I have an author website for my fiction persona and that is robinbradley.com. So a few years ago, I revamped my website and had a long discussion with Jeff. Hi Jeff, if you're watching this, my web designer. And we were thinking about like, okay, is this the time to like make a change from E.T. Robbins Productions? And we decided not to just because, you know, I think by this point I had been in business like 16, 17 years, something like that. There was some cachet with the name, you know, limited and some SEO. It just felt like a lot to do that. So what we decided to do was a compromise. If you go to my website and I'll include a link in the description, 
Um, the logo features the name Robin Bradley much more prominently. It still says E.T. Robbins Productions underneath, but we lead with Robin Bradley. E.T. Robbins Productions is now smaller. But here's the thing. Since then, like I said, I've become an LLC, so I still need to have E.T. Robbins Productions LLC now on the site more just because, you know, that's my business entity officially. And then, of course, I have RobinBradley.com as my author site. Again, are you following any of this? Um, but it, it's, it's okay. So what's interesting is I always felt that, like I'm a big, I'm into storytelling, obviously. I'm a fiction writer, a copywriter. Storytelling is huge in copywriting world. So I was having a conversation with a prospect. This was a few years ago. And he asked me about the origin of my business name. And I told him, and it's an easy story to tell. Like, oh, you know, I have a niece and nephew. I was always wanted to be a writer, blah, blah, blah. They couldn't say Auntie Robin. They said E.T. Robbins. He loved it. He thought he was charmed by that story. He's like, you know what, that's a really great story and it's memorable and it makes sense. And I had never really thought of it that way and he's right. Um, it, it is a cute story and I probably should bring it up more, but one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is to bring it up. So what can you learn from this? There's just a big, long, convoluted video to talk about, you know, naming a copywriting business. First of all, if you're new to copywriting and you're, you're trying to think of a business name, don't get too caught up in it. Yes, a business name matters, obviously, like, you know, Nike and McDonald's and stuff, but you're not Nike or McDonald's. You're just you. You're, you're a party of one who's just starting out. Go with the obvious. Use your name. That can be your business name. Robin Bradley Writer. Boom. Stewie Writer. Boom. Like, you can keep it simple. I think most writers... Most copywriters I know either use their name or they go with the clever writer name, like the Hired Pens, which is a copywriting company in Massachusetts. I love the name. You know, that's clever. You can get what they do. And there are lots of clever ideas out there. Again, just don't get too hung up on it. A, a name is not going to make or break you. And I think the simplest way to go is, is using your name. Um, as for a domain, you know, your URL, if your name, if you don't own your name, like janesmith.com, see if you can get some version of that, like janesmithwriter.com or janesmithcopywriter.com. There are ways to tweak URLs, and I include some resources in the blog post that I'm writing about this, so check that out. I'll include a link in the description. But again, don't get too caught up. It's out of all the things you have to learn and do, it's, it's, it's important, but Sometimes I think when we're starting a business, we can just get so focused on like, I got to come up with the perfect name before I can do anything else. No, you actually need to like just hit the ground running and start doing stuff and networking. So go with your name. That's what people are going to use you if you're, you know, you can figure out. And here's the thing too. Nothing is forever. You could change it if you wanted to. I'm not saying it would be easy and it depends on how long you've been in business. It could be a real pain in the butt, but you could change the name at some point. So again, don't don't get too caught up in it. If you need something simple, just go with your name. If you can come up with clever, great. Just be careful because some person's clever might be another person's corny or cliche. And here's the thing too, you might come up with the best name ever. I can almost guarantee you it probably already exists because you're dealing with writers and <laughs> we're good at coming up with clever, fun things. But see, see what you come up with. You might come up with something. I'm also going to include two links below one is to a, a name generator that I came across where you just plug in a couple words and it'll generate a whole bunch of names for you and it's funny because I tried putting in the copy bitch and it wouldn't accept it because of the word bitch so I put in the copy crone c-r-o-n-e because you know I just turned 50 and maybe I should make that change and even wondering if Google doesn't like the word bitch or YouTube doesn't like the word bitch anyway I say I can call myself it, it's playful I mean it Anyway, you can check out this tool because it came up with all these fun names for the copy crone um, to the point where I was like, huh, maybe I really should make this switch. So I'll include that. You can check that out. And then I include a link to a woman whose business is naming businesses. Like this is what she does. Nancy Freeman is her name. I've been following her for years. Um, I even recommended one of my clients use her in naming one of their products and they did. I don't, she doesn't know who I am. I've, I've never talked to her or anything like that, but they loved working with her. They love the process. Like she is a naming guru. This is what she does. So I'm going to include a link to her blog because she has in the sidebar naming 101. It has all the things that you could possibly need to like figure out and kind of test yourself as to 
whether you're coming up with a good name for your business. And you know, if you want to go into that area, that could be something, a service, if you get good at that, that you could possibly offer. She also offers a service for, because you know, it's, it's, I think it's probably fairly pricey. I shouldn't say that. I don't know exactly what it costs, but you know, I, you probably wouldn't hire her to like do your name for your business if you're just starting out, but she does have a low cost alternative for people who are just starting out that just need a little bit of advice. So you'll see that on her website, which I will link to. So there you go. There's a story of my copywriting business name. There are some things to think about as you're naming your copywriting business. I will include links below. And of course, if you have any questions, I am the copy bitch, maybe the copy crone. You can ask me, leave them in the comments and maybe we'll do a video about it at some point. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up because that helps us out. I am Robin, the copy bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick sloth, and we'll see you next time. Bye.